Today we have an action-packed walkthrough with the CEO of Printed Farms himself, Jim, and he's going to show us all the details that make the biggest printed building in the world so unique. Electrical, plumbing, windows, roofing, moving the printer, we cover it all in this video. This whole project's a $3 million project. The client expects it to be done like a luxury. This long aisle way from porch to porch is 155 feet. We don't design build for the printer. We print whatever the client wants to be built so that we can further the 3D CP industry. We don't tailor anything to the printer. Um, here you can see where the plumbing was integrated in the wall, like you saw over there. This is a sink in here. This is a feed room. From what I understand, you tailor everything to the horses. You know a lot of the details that other contractors may not really understand if they haven't kept horses. Well, this is my seventh horse barn that I built. So this is obviously a knowledge I have that, you know, people in this area have, but a lot of areas you wouldn't. And you wouldn't build a lot of these features, of course, in a, in a house, and yet many of the features are similar. Uh, here we had a pour, but we got to put a pipe, and this um, big pipe is where we tie the horses. But the electric is the same as any house, would be the same. If you had a divider or a wall inside a house, this box would be the same. Um, so a lot of the integrations are the same. When you look to behind you, this is what we had to do. This is where the machine was. We had to prefab everything. The holes with the pipes is how we lifted them. And then we set them in place. We have to um, shore them up because when we pour the columns and everything to hold them in place permanently, we don't want anything to move. Um, so are these four separate locations of the printer or? There was five moves of the printer on this project. So this was one location right here. There's where the wood is, is number two. And then we come around, we come around the corner. Um, so the printer has columns that support itself and you obviously can't print in the way of the columns. Correct. So you prefabricated these pieces right. similar to those? So if you step here and run your camera, you'll see another area that we're gonna move the, the we're finished printing this, this facility now, uh, this barn part. So right here, you can see where the printer is in the way. We will lift the printer out on Monday, move everything, set our prefab pieces that are all already printed over there, set the prefabs all for the porches, and then do the final pours, which is the, the columns and the, and the beams. Nice, and it looks like you're prepared for a beam right there. You left space on the wall. Yeah, the beam has to be continual on the outside. That is a major structural aspect of this building or any building. That's a two foot tie beam. Um, and all the steel that is uh, required by the uh, structural engineers. This is all structurally engineered, and that carries the roof. So the columns inside the walls and the tie beam is the real structure of this building. You know, two bathrooms, just like a house, except they're half baths. There's no shower, um, but that could have easily been incorporated, but they don't need it in a horse barn. And so this is how we incorporate the plumbing in a normal house. And hopefully you come back when we finish and stuccoed and done everything and then you'll see how it goes from this stage, which is the shell stage and the print stage, to the finish stage, um, which is all conventional. The stuccoing, the stools, the vanities, everything is set. I certainly will come back for that, so make sure to subscribe. How did you do the framing for the windows? Do you have... Did you make any changes or adjustments to that? So these windows here that you're looking at right mm -hmm. now are not true windows. Okay. Just openings for air and that, and they'll have shutters on the outside. Hollow walls make it a much cooler building than you would have with block or a solid concrete wall. This is a true window. This is our uh, laundry room. And in that window, on each side you have um, the columns that you tap con into, because you have to have columns on each side of the window. We have a 12 inch lintel pour that's already in the wall right now. And then underneath the window is what we call a sill. This sill is like this, and this is a standard, you know, with standard two, three rebar across. So what you do with any opening, whether it's a doorway or a window, you build a box of concrete, and you secure your window to that box. So here's a horse area that's ready. We have footers here to 
put in the box stalls just um, come prefabricated and we put them in. It's really incredible how flat these walls are. This is about our third generation nozzle um, and I'm going to take you outside to some prefab stuff. We'll go look at that now, how we do it. So here we've done a test stucco system. Uh, I felt they went a little thick. This is a bonding agent, but again, uh, we, we did the, this is the rough coat. There's one coat underneath it, then the rough finish coat, and then we can finish it with a super smooth coat. And if you run your hands on here, you can feel how smooth that is compared to this is a little sandy. This material is almost impervious to water entry. You stucco block because you need to um, stop that water entry. We don't really need the stucco other than aesthetics. Mm -hmm. We printed the walls and my plumber loves to cut. Obviously, they got to get their hands into work. This is code, you got to have this here. And we will mitigate this with netting and um, stucco. We can, in the future, integrate these systems with a lot less holes if we do it ourselves as we print. Some of these were done as you print? No, only the boxes. Okay. So the boxes are done as we print. You can see how it's much smoother, it just goes in and uh, it, it's integrated into the wall. This is standard building ways where they come in after you build a wall and they punch big holes in it. It's done in almost every building system. So we want to cut, you know, like a big hole here. We would bring the pipe up as we print and then just have this cut while it's wet. And this would just literally where you see the screws, this would just set in the wet concrete Another really nice detail is the copper pipe in the wall, and that just shows you guys have really put a lot of attention to those details, and you didn't just bolt it to the outside like you easily could have. Well, yeah, that would have been sloppy. No, this is a, this whole project's a $3 million project. The client expects it to be done like a luxury horse farm. So these pipes are inside, and that white box on the wall, that's also set inside so that nothing is really sticking out this is printed patio did the tops printed farms did the bottoms and this is a uh, symbiotic relationship we feel that when it comes to finer printing and detail printing we don't have the the machine for that um, or the material we're, we're, we're more structural we want a 6,000 psi we want a very strong material structurally and the real structure in these columns is the pour inside. Here you see an unfinished column with the cage and rebar. We are in Hurricane Alley. Everything has to be made for hurricanes. This is where you'd have your most wind lift is on your porches. Yeah, we're very pleased with the way it came out. And it's very hard eventually to do a square to, to a square to a round as these are. In fact, it's almost impossible. Mm -hmm. Freedom of design, things that we can do with 3D CP. Of course, we have to finish our lower part with, with stucco, but they can print this in about two minutes. I did visit their facility. You can see that in another video. Yeah, for us, we feel it's a very nice marriage and, and, and uh, design feature that just makes this building unique in horse barns. These corners that you're looking at on this building are the tightest we can do with this machine. Some people want square corners, and I said, well, let's do a different system. But we like the curved corners to, this, to the square look, and that's why we highlighted it on those columns. You know, we have the same look in these windows, and these are not windows also. They're, they're large openings to let a lot of air in through the horses. They'll have shutters. In bad weather, we close the shutters to protect the horses. The beams for the porches that, that go on to those columns. Wow, so these are out. all structural. Yeah, these are, again, the two foot high, high beam height. As you can see, we cut this, this pops off when we get it up because it has to be a solid pour all the way through. That's your real strength. And you can see we have a net on the bottom, obviously, to hold, to keep this from falling down because we'll have this will be supported because this is a span. We'll probably pour a, about an inch or two on the bottom here, let it set before we fill these. So we'll fly these, set them all in place, take the wood like we did with the other prefab stuff, make sure we don't lose a pour out a corner or anything. So we're using a lot more wood on this project than we feel we will in the future. Uh, we could have used what we call uh, steel columns with a board for that openings, the doorways, but we had to 
you know, feel our way a little bit because it's a fairly new territory that we, we got into with the building of this size. I guess to print these, they have such a small layer time, you need to do 12 at a time? Yes. And we did that. We printed all this um, prefab stuff before we printed that last print. We printed uh. it inside. We, we packed the sand. We printed up one or two layers. Uh, you can see a little bit here. We print up one or two layers and then to make it level because the sand's not perfect and then we would put plastic down then we print up for our two feet wow it's pretty hard to print just a straight wall too they tend to topple it's not easy um we're you know what i wanted to show you except for these tags we're we're just as smooth inside as outside so that we know exactly our distances these are exactly eight inch beams and it's a standard beam size in um, block construction, and we want it to be the same. The roof clear spans all these areas. So the roof, the inside walls are not um, supporting any of the roof area. Done a lot of off the shelf stuff, but this MTEC system was made more for stucco. There are some more advanced MTEC systems that they use for the 3D CP industry, but we're very happy with the dual mix. Um, it does enough because we found that again the key to this game is is running this machine at the same amount of print speed to your labor speed as i explained to you before if you print too fast your laborers can't keep up to do their jobs cutting in the boxes putting in the ladders putting down this mesh as you can see we have a lot of integrated parts to a wall and you can't go that fast so we've got to do more of these prints where we integrate the printers, the delivery system, I call them, the generators. So it's the most economical and um, cost effective. And the hardest thing right now for us is the labor source. Hey, Adrian, how's it going? Uh, hey, man. How's it, what are you working on here? Okay, I am going to how many we are we needed for fitted out diving columns and footers. All right, thank you, man. You're welcome. Good to see you. Hey, everyone. I'm James Franchi. I'm the printer operator at Printed Farms. Uh, my day to day is just setting up the machine, calibrating it, and getting ready to print. For the last two feet of this section, I would just walk around the scaffolding, controlling the extrusion, and checking for the material quality and the print quality, and just making sure the machine is moving in the right direction and going from place to place, and all the transitions are good. What's a common intervention you might have to make? A common intervention is a, it's inconsistency in the material. So sometimes the material would set up or be too wet and we would pause or up the extrusion, re reduce the extrusion. Um, another common run-in would be the extruder getting full. So maybe it fills up and the concrete hardens inside and we would have to pause and clean it out, things like that. Is there anything very different from what you expected when you started? Not very different. It's just super surreal being inside of a 3D printer coming from somebody who has a desktop 3D printer. It's definitely a, definitely a change of pace. It's super exciting. Printed Farms is doing a, their cash raises a little different than a lot of the other companies. We find and identify projects like this, spec projects where we, we purchase the land, develop the building, and sell it. This way the investor gets a return fairly rapidly, they're not in very long, and we further the R&D and the process to make a stronger 3D CP industry. And by doing this way, we feel it's a win-win for everyone. Um, and all these projects have challenges that any new technology would, would be that way, and we just feel it's the best synergy between the investment community that wants to get into the 3D CP industry and companies like Printed Farm where, you know, we just keep everything rolling. And obviously we're adapting and um, growing at every project and hopefully making everything more cost effective for the overall industry. Here's the center of the building. It's a 10,105, I think, uh, square foot building. And it's a mirror image. So here we're on the center and to the right, the same as to the left. So um, what it's given us is uh, we've moved the machine for five prints. 
plus a six print of prefab. And so we've, we've done two, two sides twice, and then the middle section was only done once. Um, because even though it's a mirror of each side, it was one print. So this whole build has given the 3D CP industry a very good view of the cost per square foot, how to build, and because it's all the same um, and done redundantly twice, a lot of data that, as I promised, I will let you publish as soon as we've done crunching the